Hey, what's going on guys? Mr. Chuckles here, and today I've got another gameplay breakdown for you on the Burning Shrine. So we're going to talk about everything that I do right and everything that I do wrong. So I'm playing my Gunslinger class on Burning Shrine, like I said, in a three-man fire team, and I'm using the Amida Multi-Tool, Party Crusher Plus One, and my Tomorrow's Answer. So here I can see that they're capturing C. I'm trying to just stall them from capturing a zone. Unfortunately, I play that pretty poorly. The guy steps back, and I get blasted with the last word. In my opinion, that's how the last word is meant to be used. Even after the nerf or the patch, that is the last word will be effective at that range, and that is primarily what I believe the last word was intended to do, is high DPS at a close range like that. So that was just poor play on my part. And I go to capture C, and then I realize, actually, I don't want C. A is much better to have, in my opinion, A, B, instead of C, B. And I can see that they're capturing B too, so I'm trying to push over and help out uh, stall them from B. But unfortunately, I can't do anything from my angle right now, because that wheel was in a bad position. So I'm going to pick up the special ammo and work my way out to A. I want to basically flip the spawns. So I go through and put in a bunch of DPS on A. I clear two guys off of it, they're all super low, and I take out the third guy, which is absolutely awesome. I go through, I get an Enforcer Metal right here, and destroy that guy. Then I get a nice little grenade kill here. So my team is capturing B, which is awesome, so I'm trying to make sure A is completely cleared off and I have flipped the spawns at this point, which I have, which is awesome. That was my goal. Now I'm going to provide cover fire for my team, because the wheel is basically spun. The best time to capture B usually is when the wheels are up, simply because less people can shoot you, and you can people can just sit outside on your team and provide cover fire while they're capturing B. If the wheels are all spun and you can shoot from both angles, then getting attacked from multiple angles is really hard to defend a zone. So, predicting things like when the wheel is going to be up and when it's going to be down and when to go through and to capture is really, really important. And just kind of working around that. As you can see now, the wheel again is about to spin down. So I'm trying to kill this guy up above me so I won't get flanked. And then I, that way I can shoot the guy on the B zone right now. Because I know that they're going to be moving back to B. Basically, I go through and I wait here, shotgun this guy in the face, and I cancel my reload so I can get off another shot really quickly. Again, the wheels are all up, so I'm trying to provide some sort of cover fire for my teammates. But nobody's pushing in on B. I'm not sure if they're just afraid to or what. Also, my aim is pretty damn terrible this game. I don't know how I got so many kills this game. I went like 41 and 6 with 9 assists and 70, uh, 7,290 points. I'm just telling you guys that because the scoreboard didn't get recorded. I don't know why. But that's pretty much the score at the end of the game. This game is a lot closer than it should have been. We were all playing uh, super... We all played well, but we played as individuals, and I was like, like I said, I'm on a three-man fire team. And I have another game that I'm going to upload for you guys later today, or maybe tomorrow. Kind of showing you the difference, it's also on Burning Shrine. What happens if you play as a team, and you play as individuals? We were all on a three-man fire team, but we weren't really communicating. We were kind of just quiet, and just doing our own thing. It was later in the night, and we really, we really just weren't talking all that much, and we didn't communicate our goals, or even rotate well together. But in this other game I'm showing you, I'm actually playing solo, and I'm not communicating with anybody, but we all rotated extremely well and worked as a team. Even without communicating, we would just see somebody get dropped, and then we'd go capture a zone. And I'm going to kind of show you the difference between how fast you can end a game, and how quick you can change the tide of a game, if you all rotate as one. You should almost think of your team as like a chain, where one goes, the other one kind of follows. You're all kind of linked together. So right here is actually a really, really poor play on both of these guys. I have heavy ammo, but I save it. And it's a good thing I did. Those two players right there both had supers, and I golden gunned them. So they made a drastic mistake there. Both of them did, simply because they were camping in the back, which leads me to believe that they still had full heavy ammo, or close to full heavy ammo. And so I just killed both of them. So one, they just cost them another death. Both of them also just lost heavy ammo, so cost them and their team a crap ton of kills. And I also got another kill with my rocket because they didn't kill me. So thinking about things like that, if you can just shut somebody else heavy down, you need to. And so they both played that really, really poorly. Sorry about that, guys. I'm still waking up and still trying to feel a little bit better. So take out a golden gun here. Unfortunately, my teammate ends up getting shot right in the face. But I live because of that, so I am grateful for him. And here I'm just trying to provide support but my team is all grouped up on a right now we have a and there's no reason to be sitting on a at this point we have the zone and there's no reason whatsoever to be all grouped up in that one little area now they're kind of pushing in but they're all pushing along the back when really all we need is b we don't need to be pushing super far it's going to be get us killed that's why you see right here i don't ever pass this point really and if i do i often get killed because of it i'm just trying to make them rush into us if we can get b control these side alleyways and constantly team fire them as they walk out we would have zero trouble and the game would have ended a lot quicker too. 
but unfortunately we don't end up doing that. That would have been the ideal thing to do, is to capture B and then just let them run into us. And we would have probably had B the entire game. So here, this little guy right here has a shotgun, and I'm aiming at his feet and his body, because I'm figuring this hunter is probably going to be slide shotgunning me, trying to like blink towards me. He just throws a throwing knife instead though, which is fine. I know that was the same guy earlier who was on a spree and I got the enforcer medal on, so I was trying to play it a little bit safe, I didn't want to rush into him with the shotgun. Missed my grenade over there, and at this point, heavy ammo is about to spawn, and as is a special ammo. I actually make a pretty poor mistake right here. I see the guy on my left, so I go to slide shotgun on him, and he instantly backs up. And this other guy provides some uh, cover fire for him, which I sh was really bad on my part. I should have looked left down the long hallway first, checked to make sure that was clear, and then moved over. So here, golden gun, I'm going to use it just to secure heavy ammo, get rid of the stupid warlock, get him off my heavy ammo. And two, my golden gun is now used, so every rocket that I get a kill with will now build towards my next super. I'm not upset that I got one kill. I just got somebody off my heavy and made sure I could secure mine. I don't want to take any risks. So here, being outside, in my opinion, why it's so much better, you have so much more room to work with, and there's so many good angles. As you saw earlier, I really like sitting up top, up here, simply because you can shoot anybody who walks near you with rockets, and you can jump and move around. If anybody fires a rocket at you, you can just sidestep behind this pillar, and it almost always hits that pillar, and I've died to a rocket maybe once while I'm up here. I can almost always hide from people. This provides me really good angles. You just have to make sure you're watching your flanks, your left and right, to make sure they don't pop out. Here's a great example. I, I saw my radar, check my radar every kill, and then I kill that guy, get rid of his heavy ammo, and then I go back to what I was doing, trying to secure B and keep them off of B. This guy gets a nice little snipe, but I back off, and I'm just running away then, and trying to reposition. This guy, my radar, I realize this guy's crouched around the corner. No shotgun kills for him. And back to B. But unfortunately, we're all pushed in... Well, no one's pushed in. I'm pushed in on the right, and one of my guys in my fire team is pushed in on the other side. But our team won't push in to B. We have this area on lockdown, and they're just not seeing that and not pushing in because of it. They're almost hesitant to push in, simply because the last couple times they have, they've got supered. And I know that the majority of these players don't have their supers on the opposing team just by looking at their icons, but a lot, a lot of players can't do that. Here I step on B to try and capture, and then I see my radar and I realize we're about to get supered or rushed. So I backpedal a bit and basically try and just clear these guys off. This guy, I realize he has a super too, but he held onto it, which cost him his life again. People don't use their supers and they should. I always tell you guys, if you have a super, you should be using it. And so many players, you'll see this game, have a super and don't use it. That guy outplayed me with that scout rifle. That scout rifle was obnoxious. Every damn moment, I felt like I was getting blasted by that thing and just murdered. I think he had explosive rounds on, so it was really hard to see. And that's why it was just so obnoxious. Same thing, the same warlock was just crouching behind a corner, just sitting there. If you sit there for over five seconds, you're giving away your position. So sit there for a few seconds, and then make a move. Otherwise, you're just, whatever you're doing is pointless. Don't just sit, sit around waiting for people to come to you. That's obnoxious, that's annoying, and it's not going to benefit you whatsoever. So here, they're capturing C. I'm just basically trying to keep them back. This guy has a super, so I'm kind of backpedaling. I don't want to take him on, but I know my team is capturing B, so I want to keep him busy long enough to where my team can capture B. And again, dude has a super, and he doesn't rush in to use it, so I don't know what he was thinking. These guys are blink shotgunning my team, and unfortunately my team, when they're capturing zones, they were just kind of capturing it. When you're capturing, you need to be paying attention, paying attention to your radar, and if you need to backpedal a bit and go through and just figure out where you're going to get attacked from, kill the guys that are going to attack you, and then basically go through and reposition. Heavy ammo's up, but I'm going to wait for the vortex to go away. Here's actually a pretty good move on my part. I golden gun first, and you're probably wondering, why would you use a golden gun when there's rockets spawning? Golden gun travels faster than any other rocket launcher in the game. You can't compete. And it's a one-shot kill guaranteed if I hit somebody. So if I go through and use my golden gun, I instantly can outduel two rockets and still be able to jump around. I get rid of two of their heavy ammo, and now my rockets start building my next super. I realize the game is almost over, but it's the, it's the idea in general. The Golden Gun travels faster, and I have a way better guaranteed kill with that than I do with my rockets. And yes, it is risky, because I could have lost my rockets, but I was pretty damn sure that I'd be able to outduel two of these guys, or even three if I had, had the opportunity. And then that pretty much wraps it up for the game, guys. But like I said, I will be uploading a game later on today, talking about how team play really can end a game much quicker than individual play, whether you're with randoms or you're with a bunch of friends. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you're all having an awesome day, and I'll see you later.
the battle won, on to the next fight.